the shit we find out in this week's chapter of One Piece, mind-blowing. Though Flamingo, it all makes sense now how he's able to call the shots worldwide, even though he was rejected and denounced as being a celestial dragon. It's like one thing after another finding out about this guy. Truly a fucking mastermind. And I really hope after getting this interesting flashback and all this information next week, Oda, or shall I say two weeks from now because he's taking a break. Because this happened last time when we started getting into the Corazon flashback. We went into it and then we took a break. And then we came back and it was totally just like not even mentioned. I really hope Oda doesn't do this right now because this is too good. In case you can't tell, I'm kind of hype right now. So basically, in a nutshell, Doflamingo has control over things because of his knowledge of the existence of the national treasure that basically the Celestial Dragons don't want anybody to find out about. So this, whatever this national treasure may be, it could be one of the great weapons. It could be something just enormous that they don't want anybody to find out about this treasure. But regardless of what, Doflamingo, like, <laughs> yo, the fact that he was able to use that to basically blackmail them into giving him the world in the palm of his hands, he has the world at his fingertips because of what he knows, like, power move. And things started getting really interesting when Doflamingo was like, what will the humans do with the fallen dragon king? And it started off just really vague and it's just like, what is he talking about? You know, again, Doflamingo going into some rich things and he almost talks as if he's not human, like if he's some fucking Kiduin Ragio type of shit because he's like, hey, humans, this and that, it's like, Aren't you a human, bro? Or maybe he feels so monstrous that he's like, yeah, uh, I don't feel like a human. Fuck humans. And Doflamingo's hatred for law makes total sense when we find out that he needed the OPOP fruit to access the power of the national treasure. And basically right now, all he can do is use the knowledge of it to control them and have him do whatever he wants. But if he doesn't have the OPOP fruit, then he can't access that actual national treasure. So he must really hate law right now. And it all makes sense. Everything came together. The exposition of this chapter really just made everything like oh shit and i'm glad along the way oda has given us some displays of what he was talking about regarding the powers of the opop fruit like in punk hazard how he was able to implant people's personalities into different bodies we've already seen a display of that when chopper and frankie and all them had different personalities in each other's bodies so when he was saying that that is a pretty rich thing to do like if i wanted to let's just say live an extra, you know, lifetime, so to speak, transfer my personality into some little kid, and bam, I have a whole life ahead of me. But the most powerful thing, which makes me wonder, like, why doesn't Law want that? Like, I, I would totally want that. The user can grant someone eternal life, but at the cost of their own. So if he wanted to give, let's just say, for example, Luffy eternal life, he could totally do that. I'm wondering, to what extent is eternal life? Does it just mean you'll never die of age? Or, like, because eternal life, I I'd imagine what it means is basically they can live forever, but, like, you know, if I stab you or, you know, chop your head off or some shit, I'd imagine you die. And you can definitely see Law's characterization, a lot of it revolves around whatever happened all those years ago with Corazon. And the thing is, if you remember a couple chapters back, at first he said what happened 13 years to Corazon and what happened, you know, what Doflamingo did. And we know that Corazon is his, Doflamingo's younger brother. But in this one, we go 16 years back. So the flashback we're in right now is three years prior to whatever will happen to Corazon later on. And whatever it is, whatever the past is, we can definitely assume that Corazon used his powers. And he probably had the OPOP fruit and basically used his powers to save Law's life. Because Law was basically going to die in two years and three months from that flashback. So he probably saved his life. And that's why Law just felt completely indebted to him, which is very interesting interesting and pull the opposite to the characterization of what we got of Corazon in this chapter where basically he hated kids so Law must have bonded with him very greatly for him to have done that because if you don't like kids why would he have bothered to save his life and the thing is I'd imagine whenever Corazon does die it's probably some fucked up shit that Doflamingo did which in turn made Law go and eat the fruit because I think in this chapter Doflamingo was like you were never supposed to eat that fruit I didn't want you to eat that fruit and since he did basically he had to groom him or whatever so I'd imagine he did some fucked up shit, and Law was like, okay, I'm going to eat this fruit to remember him by, and I want this fruit, and that's what happened. And going into finding out that Corazon couldn't speak because of a shocking accident, I'm guessing it's two things. Either he was there to witness what Doflamingo did to his father, and he just stood in shock, and he's like, he couldn't talk no more after that because he saw his father get beheaded, or Doflamingo did some really fucked up shit because at the end of the day, if he has a little brother, his little brother could be his successor, and he wants to have him under his thumb. So he probably could have done something to make sure that he can't talk, which I don't put it past him. He stole Flamingo. He's nuts. And is it just me or did the picture that we saw of Corazon at the end of the chapter 
He kind of looked a little bit like Bellamy. I'm not saying Bellamy is Corazon by any means, but he definitely looked like him. And maybe that's why Doflamingo never really killed Bellamy because he reminded him of his kid brother. And while he still probably ultimately killed his kid brother, he had a soft spot for him. And that's why he hasn't completely killed Bellamy, even though he's beaten the living shit out of him and put him near an inch of death. And the major things that we got in this chapter, first of all, finding out about this national treasure that Doflamingo has knowledge of. And if he has the OPOP fruit, he can access it. Huge revelation right there because whatever it is, it could be one of the secret weapons or whatnot, and it will just devastate the world if he gets his hands on it. Also, finally diving into Law's backstory with Corazon, seeing a little bit more of him. It's like, this is getting really good now. Like, One Piece it was in a drought for a few months, but like the past month of chapters or so, including this one, have just been like fucking incredible. Really stepping it up, getting some backstory, getting huge advancements and plot twists, and is like... Yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'm giving this chapter a 9 out of 10. We learned some great stuff, and overall, it's slowly inching towards the climax of this arc, and I can't wait to see how it goes down. Just, Oda, don't disappoint me, and then we come back in two weeks, and we're looking at the fucking Tontadas rubbing their nipples, because I'm gonna be like, wow. But let me know what you guys think. What do you think about this national treasure? What do you think it is? Do you think it has any connection to One Piece? I doubt that, but, you know, you never know. And just a thought, if this national treasure is this important and this powerful, just imagine how strong and powerful the impact of One Piece will be when we arrive to it. And just overall, let me know what you guys think of this chapter. It was like, Corazon, like, what, what happened all those years ago? But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, if you could do so as well, that would be awesome. I'm Fnubble World, and as always, people, have an awesome day.